harvesting of timber has only a small short-term impact on forest streams if the skid roads, landings, and truck haul roads are all well planned and constructed. But if road systems are not carefully located and built, erosion will occur and streams can be polluted. To control erosion on disturbed areas, to minimize the amount of eroded soil material entering forest streams, to protect the habitat of aquatic life, and to assure good stewardship of forest resources, some states have established guidelines for timber harvesting. These best management practices, BMPs we usually call them, vary from state to state. But they have a common goal, to control water so that soil erosion is minimized and stream water quality protected. And they use common sense techniques. Procedures we're going to look at in this practical guide to best management practices. You begin with a plan and an understanding of the job to be done. The owner should describe his expectations and requirements and should engage the help of a professional forester who knows about BMPs and can supervise operations. The logger should also be involved, so he'll know what's expected of him and have a chance to make suggestions for solving problems. Deciding how to access the logging area and how to deal with environmental considerations are major decisions, and all parties should have a clear understanding of what's required and how it'll be done. In order to protect water and soil resources, you should locate roads and landings as far away from streams as possible. Keep them on gentle grades and build only as much road as you need. The guiding principle, handle water in small amounts before it reaches destructive force. A good logging road will have structures to control water, like broad-based dips, culverts, and effective ditches. These roads will also be separated from streams by filter strips, which absorb water and hold sediment which runs off of the road. Filter strips are strips of forest between the road and the stream. The most important water control device used on skid roads is the water bar. You should install these water bars after logging is completed or during logging when a skid road is temporarily taken out of service. You can also use them on truck roads closed to traffic. Small dozers are generally used before water bar construction to smooth out the skid road, fill in ruts, and remove berms. Give the water bar about a 30 degree cant downslope, and since it will settle, make it at least two feet high. Make sure the end is downslope and open. Water bars should be spaced not more than 100 feet apart on roads with grades up to 10%, 50 feet apart on steeper sections. Where streams are too large to be crossed using culverts, you'll have to build bridges. On roads that will be used by vehicles after logging, you should make permanent bridges of treated lumber. They're costly and require expertise to build. On roads that will be closed to vehicles after logging, you can use portable or temporary bridges. If a stream bed is stable, and if state regulations allow, you may be able to ford a stream. The approach should be graveled, and the road should meet the stream at a right angle. Landings can cause big problems. Logs are skidded in, heavy machinery is moved about, oil and gas can be spilled, and the ground is constantly churned up. 
you should locate landings away from streams and drainage to prevent eroded soil material from washing into streams. And when compromise is necessary, you need to install additional erosion controls. Landing edges can be seeded and mulched, slash piled up on the lower side, and silt fences or hay bales used to trap sediment before it reaches a stream. After logging is finished, road smoothed out, and water controlled, you should seed truck roads, skid roads, and landings. Seeding helps control erosion, makes the logged land look better, and provides food for wildlife. After seeding, mulch exposed sites in critical areas close to streams. Well, that's about it. The guidelines for logging we call best management practices. You can get more details as well as your state's specific requirements from your forester. And by following these guidelines during timber harvesting and handling water in small amounts before it builds to destructive force, you'll do your part in minimizing soil erosion and protecting water quality.